A pair of longtime opponents of President Bush's policies in Iraq have come back from a recent trip there with a new view. The two foreign policy analysts writing in the New York Times say it appears the troop surge is already having a positive effect and there's hope for a better outcome than many had predicted. Correspondent James Rosen reports. The date was April 19th and not even half the troops President Bush had ordered sent to Iraq as part of his so-called surge had reached the Baghdad theater. But Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid was already pronouncing the surge a failure. That's what the president knows, that this war is lost and that the surge is not accomplishing anything. As but today, with all the envisioned troops now in place, a pair of left-of-center foreign policy analysts, one a former NSC official under President Clinton, and both freshly returned from an eight-day trip to Iraq, are painting a starkly different portrait. In a New York Times op-ed entitled A War We Just Might Win, the Brookings Institution's Michael O'Hanlon and Kenneth Pollack argue the surge is working. Iraq is still very violent, but maybe a, a one-third reduction in the fatality rate among civilians since the winter. That's a pretty substantial amount of progress in six or seven months. We are finally getting somewhere in Iraq, at least in military terms, write O'Hanlon and Pollock. Morale is high. The soldiers and Marines told us they feel that they now have a superb commander in General David Petraeus. They are confident in his strategy, they see real results, and they feel now they have the numbers needed to make a real difference. Another surprise, they add, was how well the coalition's new embedded provincial reconstruction teams are working. A new emphasis on microloans and small-scale projects was having some success. This guardedly positive assessment anticipates the showdown sure to occur in September, when administration officials have said General Petraeus will update them on the results of the surge. The Petraeus report, perhaps regardless of its contents, will provide another occasion for the Democratic-controlled Congress to advocate publicly for and attempt to legislate the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq. What makes O'Hanlon's and Pollock's assessment especially potent in the current political stew is the fact that both have previously been been sharply critical of the White House's conduct of the war. I was one of those people saying, you got to take this seriously. This Rumsfeldian notion of being able to go in quickly and not worry about the aftermath, which, which uh, Vice President Cheney and others also reaffirmed, was never responsible planning. And I think it was, frankly, verging on incompetence. This afternoon, Senator Reid's view of the realities on the ground in Iraq appeared unchanged by the O'Hanlon Pollock analysis. The present nor the future seem particularly bright for the Iraqis and Iraq itself, where our brave troops are fighting in this intractable civil war. Where O'Hanlon and Pollock remain most critical is in their view of the Iraqi government, which the analysts accuse of, quote, dawdling, instead of forging ahead with national reconciliation. Britt. James, of course, O'Hanlon and Pollock, both certified Democrats, like Harry Reid. Left of center, indeed. All right, thank you, James. <laughs>